every day in 11th grade, right after lunch, I would go to Spanish class. I love Spanish. I love the language. I love the culture. But in 11th grade, after lunch, I would go to class and I would sit in the very back row. I would sit right behind the person in front of me. I'd throw my elbow up like this, chin in the elbow, arm to the side like I'm writing, and I would fall right to sleep. Now, if I decided to try to stay awake, I would do that nodding out thing. You know, when you're trying to, you're at a, at a meeting right after lunch and you're just, you're just falling out, right? Anybody that knows me well knows that I need a nice nap right after lunch. Or I need to stay on my feet. Because as hard as I try, I just can't stay awake. I need at least 15 or 20. So in the 11th grade, after lunch, in Spanish class, you could always find me asleep. I don't know how I passed that class, Dave. It's easy to go through life just like that. Asleep. We are bombarded by outside media and stimuli, whether it's the news, social media, whatever it might be, to the point where we can just live our lives asleep, dull, dead, disconnected, not awake. We can miss the beauty of life, the beauty within life. We can miss the deep meaning of life, the deep meanings, what's most important in life. We can miss the challenges in life or avoid the challenges in life. And we can miss the invitation, the invitation to love. What I'm saying is we can go through life asleep and miss God. Do you dig what I'm saying? We can miss when God reveals God's self to us through beauty, meaning, depth, challenge, invitation to love. We can just totally miss the holy in our midst if we're not awake, if we're not paying attention. Epiphany reminds us that God is still speaking. It's a reminder to look for the star, to be seekers, to be alert, awake, on guard for God. Because God is always revealing beauty, meaning, depth. God is challenging us. And God is always, and this is real hard, God is always, in every situation, I believe, inviting us to grow deeper in love. Every moment. An invitation to grow deeper in love. That's why I love Matthew's narratives. God speaking all through these narratives isn't God. God speaking to Mary. God speaking to Joseph. God speaking to the Magi. And thank goodness they listen. 
Because some of these messages that God was, was speaking are, are life and death. God is still speaking. Thank goodness they were awake and not asleep. Church, we've got to stay awake. We've got to stay awake. Say it with me. Stay awake. We've got to stay awake. Stay awake. Because God is speaking. God is speaking. And God is especially speaking through the suffering folks out there. God is speaking through the voiceless. God is speaking through the invisible. God is speaking through the disenfranchised. God is speaking, waiting for us to hear the cries of God. God is crying out to us through the suffering of humanity and the suffering of creation. And God is inviting us to respond in love. When we hear that a six-year-old child carries a weapon to school and shoots their teacher, God is speaking to the church, asking us to respond, to reply, to love, to care, to hold someone accountable in leadership. When we watch the news, when we hear what's going on, we need to be listening for God's challenge and God's invitation to the church. Amen? We are not, we are not just bystanders in life. The church is called to be more involved than anyone in the repairing of the world. But we got to stay awake. Or we will miss God's invitation. God's calling. And God's challenge. God's challenge to the church. Sometimes it's subtle, sometimes it's loud, but God is speaking, inviting, challenging, and calling us to grow in love. My last year in Hawaii, spent a year at Hilo Coast in Honamu, beautiful place, a lot of challenges. Poverty, addiction, on the island itself. And this was toward the tail, well, we're still in COVID, but this was when we were actually going back to in-person worship. And so we were listening as a church. Some of us were listening to the community, the surrounding community. I'm not talking about the folks that just show up on church on, in church on Sunday morning, Sunday morning, but just out in the community. And we were listening to what people needed, what was going on in the community. And what we heard was people wanted to get out. People needed connection. People had been isolated. People were lonely. And so we reopened our thrift store, something simple, a thrift store. And folks worked very hard to put this thrift store together. They were gathering donations and driving all over the island to pick up stuff. And we got the store up and going. And we opened it once a week. Safely, mask, physical distance. But guess what happened when we opened it? People showed up. People began coming out of their homes. People who had been isolated and, and yearning just for connection. And guess what? People started talking eye to eye, heart to heart, and present. People needed just a place to be. And because we were listening, because we opened that thrift store, our church once a week became, as Jacob said, God is in this place. A place where fellowship happened, a place where human connectedness happened, where people could come out of their shells and experience love again. We have to stay awake, church. Amen? We have to stay awake and especially listen for the voice of God through those who are suffering in our community, 
who are struggling in our community, who need grace, who need love, who need healing. We need to be paying attention and listening, and then we can respond to God's invitation to love. Amen. God is good. And all the time. Church family, look around at one another. Pass the love of God, the peace of Christ. Namaste, recognize the love and dignity in everyone. We are the church, amen? amen? We're called to love one another, to care for one another, to support one another, to pray for one another. Do you pray for the church? We gotta pray for one another with our hearts, our hands, and our feet. Forgive one another. Forgive your pastor from time to time. And together, church, we are called, we are called to stand up against oppression, systematic sin, racism, sexism, homophobia, ageism, xenophobia, you name it, it's out there, it's within us. We're called to stand up against it, to confront the powers that be that perpetuate it, that continue it, change the laws, amen? amen. We're called to stand together for peace and peacemaking, create a just world for all of God's children and protect this planet it's the only one God's given us. And we don't have any proof that there's another one out there yet that we can, this is it. Much love, church family. Receive this blessing. As you leave this place, may you go knowing that from generation to generation, we have been claimed and loved. From generation to generation, God has been by our side. From generation to generation, we are not alone. The God of yesterday and the God of tomorrow knows you by name, loves you, and calls you forth, saying, go be the person you are called to be. Love wildly. Do justice and come back next Sunday. May it be so. In Jesus' name, amen.